Hello, folks, we're back. Back with the second round of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be back, and we're glad to be anywhere. And don't forget about our good sponsors, American Bank and Trust, mm -hmm. Targill Seasoning, and Benny's Benny Big Store. Supermarket, yeah. It used to be Benny's Big Store, but I think they call it Benny's Benny Supermarket, the supermarket now. Supermarket, now. Okay, yeah. it changed the name. Uh, you know what I was thinking about? I always wondered, you know, these convenience stores, people got these convenience stores, and I thought to myself, how can you stop them from stealing? How do you do that? So I sat down with Tommy. You know Tommy's mobile? Mm -hmm. Tommy Artigo? Yeah. I stopped by and visited and had a cup of coffee with him the other day, and I was sitting down in, in Tommy's office, and he was counting his money and stuff, and I said, what are you doing, Tommy? He said, well, I'm getting a drawer ready for the next shift for tonight. You know, he has a shift that comes on from, I don't know, 5 to 11, and he's got another shift that comes on at, from 7 to 5 or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I said, well, well, I said, what do you, how do you know if they're stealing or not? So this is what he told me. He said, well, it's easy. He said, I, I'll fix this drawer, you know. He said, I'm going to have $1,200 in this drawer. That goes to the night shift, okay? Mm -hmm. That's their drawer. And before they go to work, they count the money in that drawer to make sure I'm right. Mm -hmm. You see? They check it. Right. So they got their $1,200. At the end of the night, when I come in the next day, I check the sales. You see the receipts? And they're all itemized. Mm -hmm. He says, I know how much money they took in. Because everything, you know, that's... that's uh, taken in yeah and in other words and so he said I can figure out how much money they made and then I count my draw to see if it balances out the profit you mm -hmm. see they started with 1200 let's see what they did in sales they did $500 in sales they're gonna have 1700 right that's correct so then he checks that so then uh well I said yeah but suppose they don't run it through the thing he said well I got surveillance cameras he said and if anyone ends up short then we go look at the cameras <laughs> you know <laughs> We can see if anybody stole anything. We can see if, yeah. if you know, might have sold something, and you know, stuff like that. The camera can tell whether somebody grab a a candy bar, or grab a, a, a bread or whatever. Yeah, that's right. And the gas receipts come in, mm -hmm. and they all itemized, so he knows what the gas does. But mm -hmm. the other thing is, is okay. Suppose you're in a plus. Suppose you got seventeen hundred dollars, and a guy comes and buys a being a bag of chips. And he pays you for them. You don't run it through the cash register. You put it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. You got a profit in the in the thing that, that shows exactly what went through the register. Mm -hmm. but, but if they take it and put it in their pocket, he, mm -hmm. you know, he said, "Look, I know." He said, I, I, "I've been at this so long. I know mm -hmm. if somebody's taking or not. I can tell." Sure he said, enough. "And if they come up short in their books." He says, I'm going to look at the film, but he said, if I suspect that more is going out that's coming in when I check my inventory, mm -hmm. you see? Oh, Say yeah. he gets 500 bags of potato chips and he's got sales for, uh, they mark, they itemized, you yeah, know? Yeah, they itemized. Like potato yeah. chips might be number seven mm -hmm. or something like that. So what he does, he says, if I, uh, if I bought 500 chips mm -hmm. and when they restart me, they restart me 200 bags of chips, and I don't show 200 bags of chips on my receipt, then I know somebody yeah, then took, some. took some money, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So he said, you can't completely get it all, but he said, you can come pretty close. Come pretty close, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, if you've been around that business long enough, you can almost... Thomas has been around that business for 25 years, man. <laughs> yeah. That's a place where people gather, man. They're kind of yeah. like the Walmart, I'm quite sure. They can tell, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Bobby Gitro, mm -hmm. Sheriff Bobby Gitro is running for re-election, buddy. Yeah, I see I don't that. see where Bobby would even have opposition, huh? Yeah, you have a guy. I Somebody thought... running against yeah. him? Yeah. <laughs> Who's running against Bobby? It's a Harrison something. A what? It's a name Harrison from out of Port Barry. Black a, or white? It's a black guy. He ain't gonna win. He got sons out now. <laughs> he ain't gonna make it. <laughs> He's wasting his time. Yeah, I know, but... Where are you going to get a sheriff like Bobby Guitro, man? Yeah. He's the best. Huh? Yeah, you can not never tell. Other people are going to change their mind. <laughs> Bobby is on the ball, man. He's uh, uh he's on his yeah, game. If where... something happens, he's right there with it, you know? And he follows through when people call him and ask him for something. He's there. Yeah. You can't beat Bobby Guitro. I mean, nobody's going to beat Bobby Guitro. 
I, I, I lay any odds you want on that election. Not right now. Oh, no, man. But uh, later yeah. on, they Like might... Edward said, they're not going to beat him unless they catch him in bed with a, with a dead girl or a live boy. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Edwin Edwards, yeah, he, got he got married. married. He got married Friday. Yeah. Yeah, he got married Friday. Matter of fact, when he was in prison, Bobby and I were going to go see him. I think Bobby went to see him once, but uh, I had sent him a letter, but he got out not too long after that, and I never heard back from him. So, Eddie Boy, mm -hmm. if you are there, let us hear from you. Um, he had a, a $250 head. Uh, a little gathering in New Orleans in the French Quarter at the Montalion. Yeah, sure did. And uh, Leo Honeycutt. Did you read that book? No, I never Oh, man, read. it's a great book. Edwin Edwards is the name of it. Anybody out there ought to read that book. Leo Honeycutt spent, I don't know how many hours on that thing. Must be 600 pages. So nice. But it is some good reading about Louisiana politics and what went on. And, you know, most of us can relate to it, especially my age can relate to it because we were around in that era, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it was a lot of fun to, to read that book and reminisce, you know? Uh -huh. He got elected right right after my dad died. My daddy was uh, served under McKithen sure enough. in the legislature. And then that next term is, you see, McKithen served two terms. Yeah. And then, and then in the 68 election. That was Don Louis Butler's and man. Then, and then it comes the 71 election, Edwards got elected. Mm -hmm. He the one give Don Lee. Don Lee went seeing him to get that big drainage in Opelousas. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah, he got it done, too. <laughs> I'm the wee butler. Oh, man, Don Talking Lee, about I'm butler, I uh, see where Reggie Tatum took a shot at him uh, oh, yeah, but, with that lounge deal. Oh, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he uh, was passing, according to uh, sources, he was passing by, coming back from work. It was about 2.30 in the morning. I don't know where he was at, but mm -hmm. he was passing by this club. Yeah, he and he passed saw everybody. He, he'd be he going to his mama when he passed there. Oh, really? Yeah, that's why he passed there. He happened to pass there because he go to by his mama. And he saw some activity going mama, on at 2.30 in the morning, huh? Yeah, his mama uh, lived about three, maybe two or three blocks from that club. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, I don't know, man. They, they went and checked them out. I think they were rolling dice. Yeah, they shoot, they gamble, all that, all those little balls down there, the gambles, you know? Mm-hmm. They got some gamble activities. Well, they sure, uh, I they seen shoot. on 60 Minutes, this guy that was arguing with, with uh, Leslie Stahl that people can't control their gambling habit. Mm -hmm. He says some can and some can't. And she was trying to accuse him for, for trying, they should be trying to stop people from Man, that's from a bad gambling. deal. Let me tell you, one, I was... Uh, one old lady, she, her daughter had her arrested to keep her from gambling. <laughs> and she was pissed. Let me tell you what. <laughs> we were going to the camp one day and we had, I think, some four-wheelers and tractors or whatever. We had some stuff on the trails, me and Charlie Dupuy. Uh, and uh, we stopped at King's Truck stuff to fuel everything up. And uh, while we were there, um, you know, I was paying for the fuel and everything in the desk, and the casino's right there. And I, that's right. So I went, and Charlie had gone in the casino part, so I went in there to tell him I'd finished and what have you. And so I'm talking to this lady, this young girl, mm -hmm. and uh, she was crying, man. Still not. Oh, man. What so, she was uh, crying about? I said, Josh, let's go. He said, okay. So uh, I said, what's going on in there? What's that lady crying about, that little girl? He said, man, she said, he said, she uh, came in here and she's got a gambling problems. <laughs> and she said, her husband's working offshore and she got the check in the mail and blew it all on the uh, gambling. She don't have no more money. Yeah. That poor fella was out there working on an all rig. And she was in there and she had blown all the money, man. I said, you gotta be kidding. Oh, yeah. She said, no, she don't know what to do, man. Yeah, this lady, uh, she was so mad because she said that was the only pleasure she had, is gambling. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you do it in moderation, it's okay. I don't hardly ever do gamble. I, you know, but I, I went maybe to, once or I twice went to the year. casino Friday night to try to win the Cadillac. Uh, that's the only oh, time. man, they tell me they had a crowd, too. Let me tell you, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine. I hadn't seen her in ages. 
She was at the place. And so when the girl won the thing, she said, oh, Lord, that's my good friend. She stay here every day. <laughs> she must have come and got the, the God bless her. She got the Cadillac. <laughs> I said, sure enough. She said, yeah. She said, because she here every day. <laughs> now she got to uh, pay the taxes on that man. Yeah, I don't know if she's going to be able to pay it or not. But she said, oh, Lord, she said she be here every day because she almost be there every day herself. Mm -hmm. I said, you mean to tell me that girl been here every day? I said, she probably done put more than that Cadillac weight. <laughs> Probably so. Oh, yeah. Probably lost more than that. Lost more than that, yeah. Gator tags. Anybody didn't get that gator tag for September? Gator tags. Alligator tag. hunting. Um, you probably have too a, late now. I think he was supposed gotta, to be in by the 1st of August. You got to get a tag to go and hunt the gator. Oh, yeah. We got ours. You going to hunt some? Oh, yeah. What y'all going to do with it? Oh, we skin them and sell the hides and oh, get yeah. the meat. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Up that hide sell for a pretty good price? It depends. I don't know what they're going for now. A while back, it was only like 50 bucks a foot. Sure enough. Yeah. So, you know, 12 foot or 600 bucks. This guy, this morning on TV, he, he's a gator man. And he caught a gator 14 feet long, boy. You ought to see that thing. That's a big gator. Uh -huh. See, after a while, they start growing wide, not, yeah, not but long. But this one was slim and nice and long. Long, yeah. 14 feet, man. That's a big gator. That gator's probably 60, 80 years old. Probably so. But, man, he, he, he good at Maybe that, Maybe 80 man. years old. He can, go, he can go grab a snake in the water. He can go grab a gator. He, he can dive yeah, over there and grab him. He's a nut. He, he know how to grab him. He dive in there and get him. <laughs> you can say what you want about the South, folks, but you never hear of anyone retiring and moving up north. Huh. No, uh-uh. Listen, uh, I got an office building on Highway 190. Mm -hmm. Good visibility, lots of traffic. If anybody needs to lease an office building to run a business in, call me um, at the number on the screen, 94, what is my number? 319-4118. And I also got a lease purchase house in Lawtel. It's a new construction. It's a nice home. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's for lease purchase. Lease purchase. So you can call me 319-4118. Okay? And I was watching the movie Secretary the other day. Yeah, well. Oh, that was a good show. And it was filmed right here in, in Opelousas. Sure so last horse, I think it was 77, to win the Triple Crown. Triple Crown. Secretary and, uh, man, it was a good show. He yeah, won the, uh, show. the Derby. Then he won, won the... Uh, Triple the Preakness in the Belmont. And in the Belmont, he won by 31 lengths, man. Sure enough. 31 lengths. Whoa. That's a long way. Boy, he just ran away. It was a good show. You ought to rent that if you hadn't seen it already. Secretaries, uh, you can get it, I'm sure. In a, get in the movie store. In the store, movies, yeah. Movie store or mm. whatever. Or if you got this Netflix or whatever. Mm. Well, look. Dejon White Insurance right there on mm. six, 34 South, 34 Union, South Street. Union Street. Maybe. Come visit us. Yes, we got some we good rates and we got some good utility rates. Yeah, we got a bunch of new companies and uh, we'd be glad to quote you. Don't cost anything. We enjoyed the show and we'll see you all next week. Next week at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for listening and looking.